school. Welcome to the Homeschool 5 in 10, the podcast where every episode is filled with five of the best homeschooling takeaways, tips, and resources in 10 minutes or less. I'm your host, Kathy Gosen. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. I am very excited to have my friend Cindy West of Our Journey Westward on the show today, and she is the author of Nature Explorers and Nature Study Live and an expert in all things nature study. And as such, we're going to be discussing five things to study in nature this spring. Welcome, Cindy. I'm glad to have you on the Homeschool 5 and 10. I am so glad to be here. Thanks for asking me. I am so glad to have you. And before we get started... For the rest of you, in case you haven't noticed, we are actually recording video today as well as audio. So if you like watching on YouTube, flip on over, check us out, um, and let us know what you think. I would like to know if you like this new format, and if so, we might repeat it again. So that being said, let's get started. Cindy, what are some things we should be looking for in nature this spring, and where might we look to find them? Oh, that is a great question. So you can look almost anywhere. You do not have to go any specific place because you will begin to see signs of spring. If you've got a view out a window, you will begin to see those. If you can get outside, all the better. But some things you can look for, um, trees will, some of them are already beginning to bud out. Some of them are very early. So you can watch for things budding on trees. You can watch for new growth in flowers and grasses, believe it or not. Those are pretty interesting. There are lots of uh, varieties of grasses to see grow and and to watch for their differences in things. Um, Bugs, B-U-G-S, they begin to emerge in the spring. And so you will begin to see flies and um, really you can watch for caterpillars and things like that. There are all kinds of different bugs in various stages of their life cycles in the spring. Um, Let's see what else. Migrating birds. Birds are fantastic. Pretty much wherever you live, you will find birds migrating in or out, depending on where you are um, in the springtime. And then where I live in Kentucky, rain and things that go with rain, like puddles and mushrooms and um, just a significant new growth in green colors and um, length on trees and length in grass. All of those things are just happening big time in the spring. Okay, so you've got a whole lot there. We Let's break it down a little bit. And let's talk about bugs first. So what kind of things are we looking for with bugs? Oh, all right. So you're looking for the bugs that are flying around and crawling. You are looking for caterpillars. You're looking for um, egg sacs. So where I live, we find egg uh, we find eggs in, we don't actually find the eggs. We see the proof that there are eggs in things like web sacs, typically in trees, the the nooks and crannies of trees. That's an easy place to find um, signs of eggs. Now, I don't tear into those and find the eggs or find the larva as they come out because I I just don't want to do that. I don't want to disturb their life cycle. Um, We also have this really cool type of egg sac that looks like spit. It's called a spittle bug. Yeah. And it looks like little, um, little sacks of spit that you can find. I, I'm not particularly sure the plant and there may be more than one plant that it's found on. It's typically found on one type of plant here in Kentucky in where the leaves and the stem go together. You can find it right in there, sometimes just sitting on the stem. They're pretty easy to see. Now, depending on where you live, I don't know that you will have those, but in the spring you can find eggs and larva and just all the things from crawly caterpillars all the way to adult bugs that are crawling and flying. Okay, so whenever we're looking at these bugs, do we what do we do? Do we classify them or do we draw? What's a good recommendation for we do when we actually see something? Okay, well, you get to do whatever you want. So that's what I always like to say. When, it na- when you think about nature study, it is very often thought 
that, um, you know, you go outside, you take your nature journal, you draw what you see. Maybe you label some parts. Maybe you tell what you've seen. You can certainly do that. That's a fantastic thing to do. But you can also do simple observations of let's watch this bug move. If we have something as slow as an ant, for instance, we can watch, just sit for 10 minutes and watch the ant or the ants move and what are they doing. You can sketch that movement. You can sketch the the entire scene of what's happening and how this ant is over here grabbing a piece of a morsel of something. And then there's a whole line of them going in and out of their ant hill. Um, you can measure things. So if you find a bug that is still the ones that fly, they're difficult to to not only observe, but certainly to do things like measure um, or even keep up with where they're going. Thinking in particular of like a butterfly, they're sometimes hard to keep your eyes on. <laughs> um, but you can, if you've got a slow critter, you can certainly bring uh, along a little ruler, measure some things. You could sketch that in your nature journal, write the measurements. Um, you can bring along field guides or picture books and just learn a little bit. Writing something in a nature journal is a great idea, but it does not always have to happen that way. Sometimes a simple reading or a discussion, it works perfectly. Perfect. Okay, so we've talked about bugs. Let's talk a little bit about some of the birds, which is my favorite thing about spring, by the way. I love the birds coming out and the flowers. Oh, wait, we're talking about birds. Let's talk about yeah. birds. <laughs> Okay, so birds, you're watching for a lot of movement in the spring. You're also listening for a lot of sounds because bird calls are very specific to activities that they're doing. So you will hear sounds that are mating. You'll hear sounds that are moms calling to babies or babies calling to moms. You will hear squawks of alarm. And sometimes you can't necessarily tell what you're hearing unless you look it up online. So if you can figure out that you're seeing a certain type of bird, you can say, what are the bird calls of a blue jay, for instance. And then you can listen and say, oh, what we were just hearing was an alarm call. That must mean there was a predator in the area or something like that. So listen for sounds, even if you can't identify them. It's incredible to try to hear different sounds among different bird species. And if you've only got one in the area, what different sounds is that particular bird making? And then, of course, there's all the observation. Can you see their flight patterns, their colors? Where are they nesting? What do their nests look like? We don't want to touch eggs. We don't want to get too near to a nest, whether there are eggs or babies in there, because that's detrimental to the babies. But you can observe from a distance if they haven't hidden their nest too much. Nests sometimes are easier to find in the fall when leaves have fallen off of trees, though, because they do camouflage those nests well. Well, and I've learned the hard way. We have blue jays that come to our backyard every year, and the blue jays kick their babies out. Oh. And so they, they are on the ground, and I didn't know this the first year, and so we actually tried to rescue a baby blue jay, and oh. we learned the wrong way. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to do. So anyway, yes, I got that. So let's go on to flowers and tell me a few things. I love the flowers that come out in spring. They're so beautiful. But what are a few things we can observe about flowers? Okay, well, there are a million things to observe about flowers. Let me give you my most favorite thing to do. That is to invest in a field guide. It can be any field guide that floats your fancy. Um, I like the ones particularly that have to do with your own state, if there is such a thing. Um, we have one that's... It's birds in Oklahoma. That's where we're oh, from. Oh, so. yes. Yeah. So you could do this with honestly any topic. So this is not just a wildflower topic, but this is where we started with this idea. And it's one of my favorite ever. You essentially have this field guide and you go on multiple walks through a season and you have a little tiny sheet of those small stickers, you know, like little tiny smiley faces or flower, like whatever, just little tiny stickers. And when you happen upon a flower that you haven't seen before, you try to identify it in your field guide. And when you find it, you stick a little sticker on that page, on that picture. And that reminds you that you actually have seen that flower before in your area. You can carry that through through all seasons, 
you can even carry it through to other areas that you visit as well. But that's one of my favorite things to do because it gets us doing a few things. First, learning to identify something. Flowers are much easier to identify because they stand still. <laughs> so we can look at them for long periods of time. Um, but it also helps our observation skills because we really have to determine, are we seeing this shade of pink or this shade of pink? How many petals are we seeing? What are the, the, where are the leaves located on the stems? So it really helps our identification processes um, to do that very simple activity. I have a daughter that particularly likes her field guides and I haven't done the sticker thing. She will love that. That's a great yes, idea. Yeah. Since this is the homeschool five and 10, I'm going to pause my interview with Cindy West right here for today, but I hope you will join us again next week as we continue to talk about five things to study in nature this spring. This concludes today's episode of the homeschool five and 10. If you enjoyed listening to today's podcast, please leave a review on whatever platform you are listening on and click the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. All links mentioned in today's episode can be found in the show notes on the homeschool 5 and 10.com. Thanks again for listening to today's Homeschool 5 and 10, the show where I share the best in less.